and uh, welcome to this COVID-19 version of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Uh, as you know, the, uh, or my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. The purpose of this show um, in general is to have you, like Frank and Mary, who live here in, in Ashland and want to stay home and, and, and in their homes and stay here until they die, the question is always how do we yeah, how do we live successfully here in Ashland? And but right now, in this emergency situation, you, uh, like Frank and Mary, are kind of stuck in their house trying to figure out what's going on, uh, worried about a bunch of different things. And and so the real question is, how do you survive over the next couple of months? So the ideal, this is an ideal show to be dealing with this because of course my co-host is Steve Mitchell, uh, one of the your selectmen here in Ashland, Steve. And Steve's going to be taught, going to be uh, um, kind of introducing our wonderful uh, guest from Town Hall, Steve. Um, so who have we got? Hi, hey, Arthur. Good to see you as always. And uh, so I just want to send out greetings to uh, all Ashland residents and hope everybody is safe uh, and healthy at this point. Uh, and uh, all I can suggest right now is to keep and stay informed. But today we've got a great, a great, great guest and uh, so integral to our uh, processes as a town and kind of works behind the scenes and uh, very much uh, is uh, uh, w just one of our superstars at Town Hall, our assistant manager, Jen Ball. And Jen, before we, we get into kind of uh, what the town is doing relative to uh, COVID-19, can you talk a little bit about your background at MEMA, at the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, and you spent a number of years there. So if you could talk a little bit, I don't know how many people actually realize that you, you have that background. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, thanks for having me. So before I came to the town of Ashland, I previously served as the chief of staff at the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency for about five years. Um, and I also served as the senior policy advisor for Homeland Security um, for the state. And I worked in what's called the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. So while I was there, we worked a number of emergencies, uh, many of them were um, you know, large scale snowstorms, um, I was I was a member of the team during the uh, the marathon bombing, um, which we were activated for a number of days. Um, there were two tornadoes, um, so there's sort of most of them are either uh, natural or a natural hazard, or um, unfortunately we had the terrorist event. I can't believe that you have the serendipitous good fortune of having her in Ashland for all of this. That's terrific. That's great, Jeff. Well, we're, we're lucky to have Jen for a lot of reasons, and that's certainly that background, that experience uh, adds so much. Of course, this is, this. is there's no playbook for this particular event. And, you know, so very much, so so, so much of what we're doing as, as communities, as town officials, as town management, is, uh, you know, just things that we intuitively feel we need to do at this point. And uh, so I would like Jen to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, once we, once it became apparent that things had to change, what happened in town hall? And, and go, kind of go through the kind of the beginning and, and where we are today, if you would. Sure, I'd be happy to. So initially, as um, we started to really understand the magnitude of COVID-19, we really started to plan for how we would continue essential services that municipal governments uh, provide. And that's a really wide range. So obviously, uh, we've heard a lot about our first responders. They will continue to be out there. Um, they're doing an amazing job sort of making sure our community is safe and making sure we're able to take uh, emergency calls um, from anybody in the community and they have been working around the clock in terms of making plans um, to make sure that our staff can say can stay as safe as possible um, and that also includes our department of public works you know making sure that we have our sewer water uh, crews that are able to respond to anything that uh, they may need to um, respond to. So um, we started to really think about how we staff. Um, and if we close, you know, initially we were sort of weighing the options um, 
of closing public buildings and what that would actually mean to our workforce. So that took um, several days to sort of start to think about um, all the processes that we have that really rely on face-to-face -face customer service. And so that first week, we were really trying to put together staffing plans um, to make sure that once the buildings were closed, we sort of had that intuitive thought that in forth forethought that that might happen. Um, and so we started to think about how, what processes we could put in place that would be least disruptive to our customer service. So right now um, we have, we're working um, with a, a basically half staff in each of our buildings, making sure that there's enough space um, that we're keeping our staff safe while still being able to serve the public. And so really in each department, we've worked out different staffing plans that allow some members to work remotely while others are in the office um, and start to work through their processes to make sure that if you have a bill, you know, a question about your bill, you're able to reach the treasurer's office. Um, the clerk's office is obviously working through what it would mean if we if we have to um, postpone town meeting and or election. So what does that mean for their calendars? Um, you know, the assessor's office is working on possible abatements. Um, we're still trying to figure out the best way for inspections to happen safely so that we don't, you know, that we're able to support construction, which has been deemed an essential service. Um, we have stood up a uh, COVID hotline, which is 508 Five three two seven nine zero zero, and that's staffed during typical town hall hours. So every day between eight and four, and then um, and then on Fridays through twelve. And so we're taking that's just trying to find a way to answer questions that people might have. Um, our town manager, Michael Herbert, has done an amazing job sort of trying to communicate with the community. He's been putting out newsletters with as much up to date information that we have. Um, and then obviously, um, in terms of this being a public health emergency, you know, we have a department um, that is a department of, um, we have a department director, uh, Mark Orem, and we have a part-time nurse. And so we've been spending a lot of time um, working with Mark to create a, a nursing surge plan. So really, how are we going to build the capacity to make sure that we're doing the tracking and the monitoring as required? Um, and so for the last two weeks or, or so, we've really been working on that. Um, we're lucky to have some cooperation um, with the school nurses. And so Audrey LaCroix has been working with Mark and Nancy Cleary. And so that's really building our capacity to do the proper outreach. So that's uh, that is uh, a tremendous uh, amount of resources I think that the community has put together uh, in a in a very short time. So Arthur, my question to you, because you're involved with a number of, of communities in the work that you do, what are you seeing other communities doing either differently or the same in, in, in how they approach this this type of event? That, that's a that's a great question. It's just it's like it's really all over the map. We've been I've been we've been talking in, on, on other versions of the Frank and Mary show about folks who are doing kind of this whole range of things and also about how folks through their senior centers are dealing with all of this because you, because it, of course the audience that we're talking to the Franks and Marys of this world are just the kind of the most the most vulnerable audiences. Right. Um, but I have to say, we haven't in, in the other shows that I've that we've done to this point, we haven't had a town manager or an assistant town manager um, to be really kind of talking through how things were happening from the from the from the municipal level. I know that in uh, in uh, Westboro, we had on um, the the person who was in 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 charge of their emergency management response. Who was trying to coordinate all of these services overall, um, and I know we spoke to someone from the Department of Health. So I, would, so I was really interested in this notion of the development of some uh, with of your working with Mark Orem, who, by the way, happens to be from Marlboro, right? Of, of the uh, the evolution of a real surge capacity in order to deal with um, with folks that might be calling in or folks that may be trying to figure things out. And I guess one of the things that was was of in, interest to me is in Ashland, um, if you've got a problem at this point, if you think you've got a problem, who do you call? And in Ashland, do you know to this point, have you had any cases? Are, are, there, are there any confirmed cases that you know that are living in Ashland at this point? Yes, so, so far we've had 10 
confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. um, and so depending on what your need is in terms of if you're having, you know, if you're having um, issues with in your symptomatic and you're having difficulty finding a testing center, you certainly can call the COVID hotline and we can sort of help you with um, with resources that we have been um, given through various sources. Um, people have reached out directly to Mark Orham um, and or Nancy Cleary, which is also appropriate. And we're sort of coordinating to make sure that we get the most response. Um, you know, and I should have also said at the senior center um, and at the community center, we've been doing a ton of work um, trying to uh, make sure that that population is being served. And so we have um, our food pantry that is been trying to serve uh, clients that we have previously served, but then also people who may now find themselves uh, food insecure. And so rather than to, so in order to limit um, the amount of uh, contact, we're doing curbside pickup essentially. So um, you can call either the COVID hotline um, or human services directly, and they would be able to uh, walk you through the process. And there's a time slot on Mondays and on Wednesdays that you can go to the community center and pick up um, enough food for about a week, a week and a half is what they've been trying to make sure um, that that we're able to provide. Um, we've also partnered with the the emergency fund, the Ashland Emergency Fund, to um, help support. Um, uh, people with food insecurity and also, you know, sort of twofold also help support the businesses on a program that we have deemed uh, the 3R. So uh, 3R program and you can call the COVID hotline and that will basically give you lunch delivery uh, of food on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, you know, depending on your need. If you have, you know, two or three people in your family or four or five, um, we're able to partner with a number of Ashland businesses that will actually do the delivery. Um, which I think is really helpful. Um, there was a sort of um, break in some service for folks who were getting meals on wheels. Um, they, have, they have since built up that capacity and I think that's going to start up again. Um, but we were hoping to try to fill that, that void um, for people who, are, who typically receive meal deliveries. Um, and additionally, our staff at the community center, so Joanne Duffy, um, Eight, uh, Candy Wilson and um, Kim Katab and Jan Borelli have been trying to make as many outreach calls to the seniors um, to see, you know, this, there is definitely a feeling of isolation and a little fear um, as people stay home and they're sort of constantly watching the news. Um, so we want to make sure that we're connecting with folks. We're trying to find creative ways to stay connected with our seniors. Um, you know, that typically, the, you know, especially if folks that are typically coming to the community center, you know, they're used to having social interaction with others. And so I know Kim is trying to work on potentially creating a, um, rather than a pen pal, because I know some people are a little fearful of mail right now, um, is maybe a phone pal. And so she's trying to work on that as a creative way to keep people engaged, keep people connected. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out if you need puzzles, if there's a way that we can sort of help keep people um, busy and connected in a, in a safe way, we're, we're trying to fill that if we can. That's, That's a great, great That's idea. A That's a great idea. This notion, I, I see, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Steve, but I, I just, I want to mention, I, I just had seen um, something similar in another community. I work also in Sudbury, where, where they're looking, they're doing outreach for volunteers, just like you are, to, to try to find folks who can be phone pals just because for certainly for the for the folks that i talk to the, for my regular for clients they're just feeling at this point so isolated you know if you think how bad it is when you're required to stay home in general imagine being required to stay home but physically it's hard getting out of the house anyway you know and and and, and i was just i was just talking to a like my, my co-host in, in south pro his day job they they run something called um seniors helping seniors which is uh, a, basically a, a group that actually works with and hires seniors to provide care, to provide you know uh, rides and 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 fellowship and things for other seniors. And now, of course, many of his seniors are very afraid to go to the other to the houses of these other seniors because they're afraid of COVID. But as a result, the people they had typically seen are now more isolated than ever, right? So the notion of people in Ashland really stepping up to, to, 
work together on this. That's really wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's so critical at this point. And that was going to be my question that Jen so articulately answered already. The concern about those individuals, those residents that aren't necessarily plugged in and aren't necessarily part of the community center world. And there's many of that demographic out there. So how do we best reach them? How do we best connect? Uh, you know, I know we're encouraging neighbors to check on neighbors, th those kinds of things. And I think that's even more important than ever. Uh, and I think we've also benefited, and Jen, you can talk a little bit about this as well. Um, the work that Ashland has done to build up our human services entity and our department and the services that we've done over the last several years. And I think that's helped us to uh, work th through this, this process as, as, as we've had. Sure. So over the last three years, we've really tried to build up um, a more coordinated human services department. So we were uh, fortunate enough to hire Jennifer Wolfing. Um, she is a clinical social worker um, and she is leading that department um, under Joanne Duffy at the community center. Um, she works very closely with Care Terrell um, and they really do a lot of case management outreach. Um, they've worked on things, uh, you know, before COVID-19, they were really working on a lot of hoarding cases, um, also substance abuse um, prevention and intervention um, uh, programs. Um, she was trying to work on some uh, homelessness outreach and sort of figuring out the best ways to support our community um, much more holistically and comprehensively. Um, and they do a ton of interaction with Candy Wilson, who is our senior outreach coordinator. So there's a nice connection between um, what previously was youth and family services and the senior center. And now it's really encompassed in a larger sort of department that's uh, a little bit more, they, they're able to provide much more wraparound services. They built a really strong relationship with the school. And so I think we're doing um, a, a much better job of sort of trying to reach out to all facets of the community. And I think that's really helpful in a time like this, where you ha you're going to have um, families that are struggling, um, not only with potential loss of income, um, or finding themselves in a place where they're just uh, a, a lot more fearful or they have a lot more anxiety, um, but you also have people that are home now all the time. And so with that can become really complicated, um, you know, issues um, that happen in the home. And so by able to, well, by their, since they were able to sort of really build up those relationships, we're able to continue to provide those sort of wraparound services. We're in constant contact with the schools. Um, our human services staff is in constant contact with the senior center. And so I, I can see that continuing um, no, a lot, no matter how long that this sort of progresses. Yeah, good. That's great. So we're taping this. It's it's actually March the thirty first that we're we're taping this uh, program, and Jen, can you give us a sense of what you're sensing relative to the COVID nineteen scenario moving forward? I, you know, we're all all of us are watching TV. We're wa reading newspapers. We're getting all sorts of mixed messages from all varieties of la layers of government. What's your sense as to where we're maybe heading with this in terms of time frame, in terms of, you know, how long we will be sheltering in place, as an example? So I'm not totally clear on how long we'll shelter in place. So I think, you know, the president has now um, extended it through April 30th. Um, our governor has extended school closures through um, May 4th. We, uh, as of yesterday, had decided that we should um, also close public buildings through May 4th to sort of make sure that there's some consistency amongst uh, local government because we do realize the amount of sort of uh, differing information we're getting from the layers of government is incredibly confusing and can cause uh, more anxiety. And so it, if we're sort of thinking about um, what experts are saying, they're saying that this is going to be affecting us for a prolonged period of time. 
um, we may not see the actual peak in Massachusetts for a couple of weeks. And so I think that we have to maintain our ability to um, really practice social distancing. I think that's incredibly important for our healthcare facilities and our nurses and our doctors to be able to properly treat um, anybody who requires that level of treatment. And so, you know, that is one of the messages that I think from, from our perspective will continue to uh, share is the importance of social distancing. We will continue to try to find ways for us to sort of, you know, um, you know, not to be together while we're apart, um, find ways to, for us to be uh, socially connected because, you know, we also recognize that this is an incredibly difficult um, scenario for people. You know, I don't think that humans were really built to, <laughs> to stay as social, you know, social distance um, for long periods of time. I think that we are, you know, we are sort of, um, built to have those types of interactions that really fulfill us so yeah it's amazing how much we 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 do take for granted uh from the the, the most simple of things and uh you know despite uh the 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 thought that you know you're comfortable spending time alone you're an introvert those sorts of uh, personal qualities you, you don't realize till you're in a situation like this you know how important that contact is so you know, everything that the town is doing to kind of, kind of normalize things, I think, is is good, and we should strive to, to do that. Uh, Arthur, what's going on on your end there? Uh, but, and by the way, I was going to say, this, 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 this may be the time for all of my Frank and Mary's and people and people like me to finally figure out how to work Zoom, right? Or, or, or the other device th ways through which on your laptop you can actually be communicating with people i know that i was one of the many who always you know said oh i don't want to figure this out it's just so complicated you know but right now if if you know if you've got that machine at home this is a great opportunity for you to be connecting with your kids i just talked to one, one of my older brothers who was up in maine and they have family all over the place he had they had seven kids and there are a couple in california and there's this and that and they just did one of these sharing things, right? Where they had everybody on the screen at the same time sharing stories. And he said it was incredibly gratifying because it isn't like, you know, you want to call all these people and have necessarily a prolonged conversation, right? But you want to know everybody's okay, yeah. right? You just want to know everybody's okay. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's from that perspective, I mean, you know, you try to look at the silver lining in all of these things and say, you know, this is this is a way in which society was going to be changing. And this is changing it. This is kind of forcing the, those kinds of changes. Now, I, now I, just, I was just curious, though, Steve, from your perspective, before before we go, how were the selectmen handling all of this? Because this is going to be a strange world here. You know, you've got to you, you, your system is based on meetings and outreach and all of this stuff. So how is that all working out for you? Well, we're still conducting meetings. We are uh, maintaining our, we, the Ashland Select Board meets on the first and third Wednesdays uh, of the month. And so we have, this being the 31st, uh, our next meeting is actually tomorrow, uh, April the 1st, and we'll be maintaining that, uh, that schedule. We'll, we have modified uh, agendas. Our agendas are focused on really the important aspects of what we need to accomplish as a community. I did want to uh, actually segue into a little bit of a financial discussion on how some of the actions that the select board and town manager are doing to uh, kind of ease the financial component here on, on residents. So we're looking at, uh, you know, I know the state is looking at extending the uh, uh, personal income tax through July. Uh, we're looking potentially at extending uh, our property tax, our uh, excise taxes, our, uh, you know, those sorts of things, waiving of fees potentially. So we're looking at a number of those components that I think will impact and help smooth things out for, uh, for the senior population. Jen, can you talk to that a little bit? I can, sure. Um, so we are in the process of um, 
extending some of those deadlines. As that becomes available, um, we will be putting um, that information on our website if you're able to access um, ashlandmass.com. And if you go up to the top, there is a there's a, an alert button that says coronavirus information and we have a really informative page there. So as new information becomes available and as we sort of change our processes, um, to allow for better services. All of that information will be posted, will be posted there. Um, Michael also sends out a newsletter and so um, people can subscribe from that page as well because I would assume that as we sort of, we're continually, continuously reviewing the financial impact um, on both our, on our townspeople, but then also on, on the municipal government budgets. And so we are trying to figure that out as we move along and we expect those things to evolve. And that's one way that you can sort of get that information in a timely way. Um, we've also been really lucky to uh, work with WACA and there for folks who don't have access to the computer um, or the internet, we want to make sure that we're also informing them. And so WACA has graciously um, offered to uh, put periodic uh, updates. So as we provide information, they'll be able to put it um, up on uh, throughout their programming so that we can try to catch folks who may use this um, as their main source of uh, local information and news. That is such a great point, Jen. I'm glad you brought up just, you know, I think this whole situation has underscored the importance of, of community cable access and what it means to be able to get information out to people, particularly those that may not be plugged in computer-wise, but do watch uh, select board meetings on, on uh, cable or whatever it might be, the various shows. So, you know, I, I, I think we owe a tremendous uh, gratitude to WACA for all, everything that they've done to implement our ability to host meetings and to communicate. And Steve, I'm really, I'm really glad that, you know, you, you, had, you had suggested this, really trying to re refocus the, this, this particular show, the Frank and Mary show during this time on these kinds of issues so that we can be trying to the greatest extent possible to be really providing Kind of, you know, fairly regular, up-to-date information because you know we know this is going to pass. This too will pass, right? But in the meantime, you know, we really we kind of we're all in this together, and WAC is a great way for people who are in this together to be communicating with each other in the town of Ashland. Well, it it takes a town, uh, Arthur, uh, and you know, I I'm really personally proud of all the work that. Uh, that management and staff, our first responders, uh, you know, our public works department, uh, everybody that's engaged in in getting us through this this uh, unprecedented situation. So listen, thank you very very much, Steve, for finding this wonderful guest. Thank you, Jen, <laughs> the FEMA expert. Right now, 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 you applying her talents here in uh, in uh, Ashland. Uh, to everybody who is watching, thank you very much for watching. Um, you know, Steve and I are, you know, are working, we're really working on, on, on providing this kind of information on a regular basis, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the, uh, the, uh, the next uh, installment of Frank and Mary uh, during COVID-19 here in Ashland. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, you, Arthur. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.